Let me at him! Well, there it is. Hello and welcome to a game for Warcraft 3. It is a custom game you can get off Hive Workshop. It's called Southern Isles and it has been created by Film Ting. And this is a nice little small one versus one map that has a little similarity to Echo Isles and maybe a little bit of Secret Valley in there and we're going to explore the map a little bit more. I've yet to see it myself and what I wanted to do was pit two ultimate grudge warriors, Albert Einstein who is playing as the Yellow Orc versus Sexy Time as the Red Night Elf. These two guys hate each other with a passion and we're going to witness their passionate embrace in this game today. So I'm looking forward to this. The description for this map is Many of the southern isles under the Cape of Stranglethorn still lies unexplored and ripe for the taking of any nation who can conquer them. Will you be strong enough to take these islands for your own? The statistics for this map include 6 gold mines, 12,500 at the main as we can see, now 12,000 coming up to it, 10,000 at the expansions and 11,000 at the expansions. So uh, one of these mines has 10,000, the other has 11,000. We've got 10 orange creep camps, so quite a number of keep creep camps. They might be a little tough. Two red creep camps, two random mercenary camps or goblin laboratories, one goblin merchant, one marketplace and one tavern. Now something that Film Tang mentioned is that he actually only put one shop here. And that was to entice people to basically battle it out over the one shop. For example, the Boots of Speed. There's only going to be one Boots of Speed being sold because there's only one Goblin Merchant. Looks like Albert's going for Farseer and Grunts. Meanwhile, Sexy Time's getting Demon Hunter. And Demon Hunter has a lot of fun versus Farseer. But in the late game, if Albert does decide to get himself a Tauren Chieftain to follow alongside that Farseer and can level up nicely, he will be able to deal with what is essentially probably going to end up being a lot of talons from Sexy Time, the Night Elf player. And uh, obviously Chain Shockwave is pretty handy to have versus those if they're all bunched together. Hunter's Hall and Ancient of War expect... Oh no, Sexy Time cancelled. The hero. Looks like he's going for something else instead. I hope neither of the players are listening to the stream. I assume they aren't. Beastmaster. He's changed. He's going for Beastmaster, who's actually a pretty good hero versus Orc. Technically, the stereotypical thing for Night Elf players to do is to go for Demon Hunter, Beastmaster, and Goblin Tinker versus uh, Orcs, or it's Demon Hunter, Naga Sea Witch, and uh, Goblin Tinker. Beastmaster is good versus Orc because the Quill Beast can help pick off the Grunts when they're trying to heal from the healing salves. Looks like Albert's coming in here with a harass. He's going for the Wisps on the trees. Meanwhile, spreading some of his damage to the Ancient of War. There's already one Ancient of War up at the moment. So Sexy Time might be going for Mass Huntresses here, which I think he is because this is a typical strategy that Moon used to do. An epic Night Elf player from Warcraft 3 back in the old school days. And he would go Beastmaster and Mass, Mass Headhunters. Versus Orc players. War Feral Spirit's coming out. Is the Wisp going to get the detonate? Oh, it manages just to get one. And another Feral Spirit is about to go down. A little bit of experience there for the Beastmaster, but still, Farseer's been a real pest. It's going to be another mm, 15 seconds before he can get Wolves out, so he's not going to be able to take out that Ancient of War. Not to mention that the Wisps will keep it repaired, so this harass isn't going to go too far, but at the same time, Sexy Time's used up a lot of his mana and hasn't really got that much for it. I assume that Albert's going to want to tech soon, but it's gone for double barracks, which is really odd. There's a Moonwell in the middle here being picked off by a Grunt. If that Grunt had pillage, that would look really good right now. There's a lot of aggression between the two players, and so not much creeping, so it's a bit difficult to cover the aspects of the map when it comes to creeping. But if we look at the base, there's like a long drive into the wedged-in base, so it's quite good for defense. It allows the games to go on quite long. In your base, you have an entrance here, an entrance in the middle, and an entrance on the other side. So there's multiple ways to enter someone's base and defend from as well. So that's nice. And you've got... I mean, I really am impressed with the layout of this map. When I first saw this, I thought it looks fantastic. And I'm eager to see how these two players 
perform and it looks like sexy times going for a hyper aggressive attack so <laughs> neither player wants to particularly explore the beauty that this map appears to have they just want to finish the game straight away a hyper aggression right now from sexy time it's getting stuck into those burrows and those burrows are going to be nasty they're all bunched up together so if anything gets close they're going to get hit pretty hard cool beast can tank the burrows quite nicely huntresses can't do it too well and of course you don't want your hero taking too much damage ancient protectors coming down uh, we have got, oh, headhunters coming out. They're going to be a nice little counter towards um, huntresses. Definitely grunts want to back off here. It's not like Albert's in any threat at the moment of losing his barracks right now. So he wants to try to keep those grunts back or at least get as much damage out of those burrows for the sacrifice of losing a grunt or two. Farseer is doing a lot of harass here. He's got a couple of grunts here as well, which is very nice. Wisp detonating there, taking off some of the mana, but Albert's still got enough mana for another pair of wolves soon doing some good harass up the top. Ancient protectors are currently being produced and more headhunters. There is no tier 2 though. There is a war mill so potentially towers if he needs and he might need them because uh, ancient protectors are pretty good against headhunters and obviously quite good against grunts as well but grunts can take a lot more hits. This is definitely quite nasty because sexy tide's got a bit of a presence here. Once those ancient protectors go up it is going to be pretty difficult for Albert to push back particularly with the fact that he doesn't actually have any tier 2 coming but he does have the towers. That's something but it's not really going to stop his um Barracks being under constant threat unless he can get a tech going. But the other benefit that Albert has here, despite all of the rubbish that's going on in his base right now, is that he has got a strong attack here and Sexy Time doesn't have an answer for it at the moment. He's currently got two Wisps out of the gold mine. He's constantly trying to keep this repaired. This is costing him resources to do so. And he's not really building anything else. So this is pretty much all, he's, all he has at the moment. Whilst Albert is in a kind of position here to still build himself up. Some armies, some units. He can still tech. He's got resources coming in. He's got five peons in the gold mine so he's doing well on that aspect the gold mine's being hit by one wolf this is like an annoying consistent threat as well that sexy time's gonna have to be paying attention to by doing so concentrating on that he might lose a huntress or two so little things like this are kind of like what you might call the meta game or something like that it's really trying to do everything it takes to switch things up and really push your opponent. <laughs> I love those little headhunters going in there. Just getting a little bit close, getting a couple of cheeky hits. Sexy time probably watching his base right now, as you can see. And he's having to come back. So this is the opportunity that Albert has. He's given himself by mixing it up and basically putting a lot of threat here in Sexy Time's base. He's making it so that Sexy Time is actually having to concentrate left, right, and center. Albert's got a lot of repairing going on here, but the ancient protectors go on the peons. That burrow is definitely going to go down. He's just got to worry about that. Unfortunately, the Huntresses can't do much here. It's not very easy for them to push. The Burrows are in a pretty good position. And now that two towers are going up, it looks really bad, to be honest, for Sexy Time currently. He has got another Ancient of War below. He's about to lose this gold mine, though. Oh, down it goes. Not the absolute worst thing in the world, but it, it does hurt. But you've got to look at the resources. Those five Wisps can get busy on wood, and that wood can be useful for later on. So I always look at it that way. If I do lose a gold mine or something like that, I've, those wisps are still going to be useful for gathering wood. Sexy time is having to return back to base. He's looked like he's going to get a harass. Oh, he doesn't quite get this around. Albert's not going to risk it. He's just getting back straight out of there. He doesn't want to bother. And it's a good move, actually, to be honest. It might have been a bit over the top, but it does allow him to get back and safely deal with these ancient protectors while Sexy Time has no way to defend, essentially, these ancient protectors from going down. So... This might be the point where the two players actually start creeping and we can actually see some more of this map. So we've got a green creep camp over here, which is actually quite tough for a green camp. We've got two Murloc Huntsmen and three Tide Runners. At least there isn't the pur poison purple Murloc on top of that. So this is quite moderate. This is a more tougher green spot and it's very close, but it's doable. Obviously with an army this size, but I think with a lower army, it might be a bit of a stretch, but not too much. Not bad, that's a fair enough item. Might want to lower the mobs down there. I'm not an expert, so I'm not going to... Just take what I say with a pinch of salt. This is my feedback to a degree. It's a big enough area for more creeps, but at the same time... I don't know, if you had like creeps there and then another green camp here or something like over here. A, a little bit of a distance. Just two trolls or something like that. Something light that players at the very start who don't have very much in the game can actually go and creep beginning with. Um, Ogre Magi is over here, yeah that's fair enough really. A decent enough creep camp. Pretty easy to do to be honest. Especially at fo focusing on the Ogre Magi. I wonder whether Blade Masters could have used that. Claws of Attack plus 6 is a drop. A Blade Master could come over here, 
probably pick that off quite easily, to be honest with you. But in doing so, it's not like they're going to be by a shop or something where they can abuse and get a boost of speed straight afterwards. So that's touch and go. Take from that what you will. I do love the entrance and the layout of this whole map, though. How forces are under attack. it just flows. And there's lots of open space, but at the same time you have these lovely little kind of blockage gaps here that allow little micro battles to happen. And speaking of micro battles, we've got Albert with a really large army, currently 36 food, first is sexy times 31 food, who is probably not going to be able to deal with this on top of two towers. So basically Albert is now bringing it back to sexy time with two towers, or towers of his own. And it does look like this is bad, unless Albert loses his hero, he should be in a good comfortable position, but that is, well, it's two Quill Beasts now. <gasps> oh, that was nasty! You did not see that Ancient of War there, did you? Oh my goodness! Albert, you almost had it, and now it's gone! The cancellation of the towers. Sexy Times looking good. Those two Quill Beasts pretty much do the job. Look at that. They have got bloodlust, so they are absolutely crazy. I think there's a bit of rage chat, trash talk there coming from Sexy Time. <laughs> you can see that these two players are not too keen on each other, which of course makes this more entertaining to watch because of that. Uh, there's a nice little defense here for the, the peons. They're looking pretty comfy in there. Farsi is almost back already. Can't quite see the creek camps. Wait for it. Oh, a red drake camp by the gold mine. I'm not sure what I think of that. I think that's fine if there is another alternative gold mine. And it does make things different. And you can't have every map being the same. But the only thing I'd say is, for example, Night Elf players, if they were to go archers, or humans who went rifles, would have a good time. Most of the time in one versus one, Orc will almost never go Headhunters unless they want to lose the game, or it's against a specific strategy like Headhunters. So Orc aren't going to do too well, and Undead are going to have to wait until Tier 2 before they could possibly creep that, because they wouldn't have web, and the heroes would not be capable of taking that out. So, it's a bit rough, but again, do what that with that what you will. I like the Marketplace being there. I always think the Marketplace is a fun shop to have. And I don't think it's too broken, as long as there's only one of them. And if the game does go on late enough, yeah, you can get some really awesome items, but that makes for some interesting games, to be honest, if someone picks up Kellen's Dagger of Escape. Oh, lovely job there, Sexy Time, using the Wand of the Wind to deny Albert's body block in there. Not that I think Albert would have necessarily got the hit there, because Beastmaster is level 5 currently, he's got a decent bit of armor, and still 266 health on a hero unit means that he could take more than enough hits before he was in any real threat. So he may be low health, but he still can take a punch. Albert's still got a relatively uh, moderate army, but that is a lot of Huntresses, and if they get a good flank here, particularly on the Headhunters, they could do fantastically well. Quill Beasts are going to be building up. Beastmaster has more than enough mana, and he's going to be building them or creating them as soon as he can. There's one Headhunter saved. Grunt going down quickly with the invisible Thunderhawk. Well, I don't know if he's invisible. Beastmaster being focused a little bit. The unfortunate thing is, is whilst he's being focused, uh, the headhunters are basically getting sliced to pieces by the head hunt, uh, the huntresses, and it does look like Albert is in a little bit of a trouble. And the Ancient of War is coming back on him. Albert's taking the time to type, which is causing him to lose more right now. But quite frankly, he pretty much knows this game is over for him. It's not nice. The Beastmaster is level five. The Farseer is only level two, and there isn't a second hero. For Albert right now. If he didn't have that slip up in the attack earlier, he could have maintained it. But yeah, the Beastmaster and the Huntresses en masse are actually particularly effective against Orc. I've not quite mastered it myself as a Night Elf player. Well, I'm not a Night Elf player, I'm a random player. But, I haven't mastered it perfectly. But uh, I do know that it is an effective strategy because I've seen it done a lot of times before. Here we go. There's the GG. As you can see, Albert saying good game, well played. And there you go. Units killed, 5 to 53. Pretty harsh. Pretty harsh. That was a really close game until that attack from Albert with the watchtowers. Somehow, that...
backfired amazingly, and I'm not even sure now in hindsight thinking about how that went so wrong, but it really did. It was one of those games where it just went very, very wrong. But overall, I really like that map. We didn't get to quite explore it amazingly well, but from what I saw of it, I did like. So if you are interested in playing that map, I'm actually going to put a link to it on the stream but I'm also going to put a link to it in the video description as well for those obviously watching in the video format, which most of you probably will be. So you can check it out in the video description and uh, download the map, play it yourself, and uh, feel free to comment and support as you see fit. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, then thumbs the video up. I'll, I'll appreciate it. Share it with your friends. Keep the Warcraft free alive. And uh, yeah, have a good time. See you later.